Hey guys, Mr. Backerberg here. In this video, we're going to be looking at graphs of polynomial functions. So we're going to look at graphing out some transformations of monomial functions. So a monomial function means a function that just has one term to it. So we're going to look at the function g of x equals 4 times x plus 1 cubed. And we're going to compare this to the graph of the parent function, which would just be f of x equals x cubed, since we're looking at that cubed power in there. So what I want to look at first is that plus 1 that's happening inside of parentheses. Now when we've got a plus or minus happening inside of a set of grouping symbols, that's a horizontal shift. And horizontal shifts are always backwards of what we think they would be. So this plus 1 inside of our parentheses is going to take this cubic graph and shift it left one space. But then we also want to look at having that 4 out in front of our set of parentheses. And multiplying our function by 4 is going to take this graph and vertically stretch it by a factor of 4. And I'm going to graph this out on my calculator just to confirm this behavior. So in my calculator, I have both of those functions typed in. I've got the f of x equals x cubed and the 4 times x plus 1 cubed. Now when I hit graph, my blue graph is my original cubic function, and that red graph is our new one after we perform the transformations. So I can see that the middle of my graph got shifted left one space, but I can also see that the arms of my graph are getting taller faster. So we shifted this graph left one space and vertically stretched it because of that 4 that was out in front of the function. Now we're going to look at another example in here, and we're going to look at the function h of x equals negative x minus 2 raised to the fourth power plus 5. And we're going to compare that to the normal f of x equals x to the fourth power. Now I'm going to start inside of those parentheses. And we've got a horizontal shift happening, so that minus 2 is actually going to move us to the right two spaces. Now working our way out, we've also got that negative out in front of our set of parentheses, and putting a negative in the front of the function is going to take our graph and reflect it over the x-axis. But then the last thing we've got is that plus 5 on the back end, so we need to take this graph and also shift it up five spaces. And again, I'm going to graph this out on my calculator just to confirm my behavior. So I've got both of those quartic functions typed into my calculator. Now when I hit graph, the blue graph is my original x to the fourth quartic function, but my red graph is after those transformations have been performed. If we look in the middle of our graph, we got shifted right two spaces. Then we took our parabola shape and flipped it over the x-axis and then bumped it up by five spaces. Now instead of just looking at transformations of our parent functions, we're going to look at graphing out some combinations of monomial functions. And the first function I want to take a look at is f of x equals x cubed plus x. And I'm going to graph this out on my calculator so we can talk about its behaviors. So I've got my function typed into my calculator, and I'm going to hit my graph button. Now as we look at the picture of our graph, there's a few things that we can figure out. Number one, it's got the shape of a normal cubic function. I can also see that my graph is passing through the origin, so it would have an x-intercept or a 0 at x equals 0. I can also see that there are no peaks or valleys in my graph, so there would be no local extrema no minimums or no maximums in there. But there is a slight difference in this function compared to a normal cubic function, and it's because of that plus x on the end. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to throw another equation in here, and it's going to be the equation y equals x. And when I graph that out, I can see that my blue cubic graph, because of the plus x in the middle, is displaying some similar behavior around the origin to that line y equals x. So the leading term determines the general shape of the graph, 
but because we were adding in that extra x in there, then our graph is going to behave similarly to just that x around the origin. Now I'm going to take my function and I'm going to adjust it just a little bit. And I'm going to write a new function here, so g of x equals x cubed. Before we were adding x, what I want to do is I want to subtract x and I want to see how that affects the graph of my function. Now I've got my new function typed in there and when I hit graph, we can see that the shape of our graph still looks sort of like a general cubic function, but now in the middle we've got part of our graph that's going down. So now as we're looking at the behavior of this graph, I can see that my graph crosses the x-axis at three different places, so we would have three zeros in there. One of them is at negative one, one of them is at zero, and one of them is at positive one. Now we've also got a peak in our graph, so we would be able to find a maximum value there by hitting second trace and going to option number four there, the maximum, and then we're going to do a left bound point, hit enter, and a right bound point, and hit enter, enter, and we would find our maximum ordered pair there, but I can also see that there's a valley in my graph, so I should be able to find a minimum value as well. So going through the process, I can find my minimum ordered pair in there. Now, what was different about this function compared to the first function that we looked at was instead of adding the x, we were subtracting the x. And we said around the origin, our graph was going to display behavior similar to any additional added or subtracted terms on there. So we were subtracting the x, so we would expect our graph to display similar behavior to a negative x around the origin. And a negative x has a negative slope, which means the graph is going down. So if we look around the middle of our graph, our graph is going down in the middle because of that negative x. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.